Karuna Nandi, advocate of the Supreme Court, also joining us. Uh, before I come to you, Karuna, I want to get a quick word in from Kabir. He's also in a same-sex relationship. He's a content creator. Kabir, uh, just thoughts. How do you look at this? Prima facie, how do you look at this? There's, there's no mention of same-sex couples. There's nothing in this for you, literally. But how do you look at this? Uh, it just is very funny because uh, the word uniform in itself is it, it's laughable because it really is going to the same point. It's proving the point that we are not even in the line of sight when it comes to policies. And uh, and, and and I would want to probably correct one of my learned friends who was here, uh, who said India is a religious country. India is a secular country. Uh, so that is the fabric of our society. And when you talk about inclusiveness and in the name of inclusiveness, what you're trying to build on uh, with policies like this, uh, it is uh, it's imperative that you can consider everyone Right. And the, and what we are seeing here, the problem is not that Uttarakhand is doing it. The problem is that this is going to be a model that they will replicate for the rest of the country. Yes. And that's where the entire problem begins. Uh, Karuna Nandi, lots of questions for you. Uh, you know, you, you wear a legal hat. So explain to us. Uh, the first question is what one of the young audience members asked. Uh, you know, how is, how is this different from just getting married if you have to prove to the state why you're in a live-in relationship and and then you have to you know you have to go register your relationship and then register your breakup etc so you know why why not just get married and the second question uh, Karnanindi very simply is is it really the state's business I think you've really hit the nail on the head and you have sort of summarized very briefly what the Supreme Court has said uh, in a nine-judge bench, which is that there is intimate decision-making that our constitution protects through privacy. Now, rights cannot be the subject of a debate or of the state coming in and in, in invading those rights. In fact, the state must protect those rights. Why do I say that this is an example of a state uh, invading the right to free choice? Now, there are a lot of people, even on this panel, sort of making it very, very clear, you know, that it's not me, I am not interested in uh, live-in relationships, etc., because uh, uh, there is a significant amount of social opprobrium attached to it. Um, if the goal of the Uttarakhand state is to bring rights, is to bring uniform rights and to bring civil rights, then let them tweak this to remove the criminal penalty, to make sure that the whoever they use, the gender neutral term, whoever they use, applies to everybody, hmm. regardless of gender, regardless of sexuality, hmm. because at the moment, the words are there, they just need to, for fuller clarification, make an explicit statement, right. and let it be a registered civil partnership. Hmm. That would bring rights. At the moment, the way it currently stands, this court only brings penalty, only brings pain because it allows the registering authority to consult, consult all, sorts, all sorts of people. Hmm. It necessarily, quite apart from the criminal penalty, makes the relationship public and a matter for state and society, whereas the couples may absolutely not choose to and in fact have not because they have chosen not to get married in most cases. Hmm. Um, and makes vulnerable couples that are already vulnerable because of the nature of the relationship yes. and very often because they are not getting social sanction yes. because they are of different castes. Remember the uh, very, very limited, I think it's 11% of people marrying even within caste, forget within religions. Yes. So this, this can be changed. This can be made a civil partnership for all. But of course, we know that's not going to happen. Hmm. 